Hello everybody, welcome back to the last part of our uh, video series on the project management for critical path methods uh, where we are going to discuss the precedence diagram method which is used to, uh, to prepare or to compute for the early and late time for activity or node network models. So basically the precedence diagram method is the CPM scheduling method used for activity on node network and it is follows the same four steps of the critical path method for activity on ARC. Okay? So we have seen how we can compute the late time, early time and floats in the uh, activity on ARC method. So now we are going to use the precedence diagram to see how we can compute those informations. Now let's consider the diagram that we did in the first part of our video which is the activity on node. So we have the network diagram one for the activity on arc and the second one was for activity on node. So we are going to use this activity on node diagram to show how you can uh, solve the early time, late time and floats uh, using the precedence diagram for the activity on node network diagram. So the corresponding uh, precedence diagram for this activity on node diagram then it's this one, okay? So this is the uh, diagram uh, which we are going to uh, to use, the precedence diagram to compute for this information. You can see uh, these informations here, okay? Uh, we have this uh, earliest start time. So this chart uh, is corresponding to this labeling. So we are going to have uh, early start time at the left corner. This knee, the next box is for duration and the last one will be for early finish, uh, late start, uh, late finish, and the total float. At the middle is the activity name. Okay, so uh, after having this uh, little description, now uh, let's see uh, on how we can use uh, this approach to compute for these informations. So as usual, we are going to start at uh, this node as in the previous displayed uh, diagram, okay? So we have already uh, filled the informations which we have on hand. These informations are durations. From the table, we know the duration for each activities we were having, and we are having two uh, for activity A, we have duration for activity B, and so forth, up to activity G. So this is the dummy, uh, uh, dummy activity, so basically it's a uh, duration is zero. So to compute for early start of this node, the early start is basically uh, we set it equal to zero as we did in the activity on arc. After setting the early start as zero, the early finish of this uh, activity is going to be the early start plus duration and that is going to be zero. So the early finish of this activity here becomes the early start of the next activity. So since these all three activity here have uh, emerged from this uh, activity here, so all of these they are going to have the early start of zero because the early finish of one activity become the early start of the other activity. So starting from activity A, so the early start here is going to be a zero. So the early corresponding early finish is early start plus duration, we are going to have two. For activity B, the early start is the early finish of the previous activity, and here we are going to have zero, and the early finish of this uh, activity is early start plus duration, we are going to have four. And for activity C, the early st uh, start of this activity is the early finish of the previous activity, and is zero, and zero plus duration, we have the early finish time of three. For activity D, the early start uh, uh, the early start time here is the early finish time of the previous activity. That is, we carry it to here, and the uh, early finish time is uh, early start time plus duration, and we are going to have three. For activity E, the early start time is the early finish time of the previous activity, and here we are going to have four, and the early finish time of this activity is going to be early start plus the duration which is going to be 10. So for this activity here, the early start is the early finish time for the previous activity. So the early start time here is three, and the uh, early finish time is early start plus duration, 
we are going to have 8. For activity G, the early start here, uh, because two arrows are coming in, is going to be the maximum value or the maximum uh, early finish time between these two activities. So the maximum early finish time between these two activities is 10. So the early start time for activity G is going to be 10. And the uh, early finish time of activity G is the early start time plus duration we are going to have 17. So these two activities F and G makes the end of our project. So once F and G, F and G are completed, we are going to the end or we are done with the projects and we are going to the end of the project. So the early start time of the end activity, okay, is the maximum value between the early finish time, okay, of the activity F and G. So the uh, maximum early finish time of between the activity F and G is 17. So here we are going to have 17. And the early finish time of this end activity is the uh, early start time of this uh, end activity plus duration we are going to have 17. Now we are done with the uh, forward method in computing the early time. So we have the early start time and the early finish time. So the latest finish time and the latest start time we compute using the same method, the backward method, and the early finish time of the act activity or end activity now becomes the uh, late finish time. So pick the uh, early finish time and take it to the late finish time. So we have 17. So to compute for the uh, late start time, you take uh, late finish time minus duration and we are going to have 17 here. So after computing the late finish time and the late start time, now in the middle box as we have seen is a total float. So how can we compute the total float? The total float is the difference between the late finish time and the uh, early finish time or the late start time and the early start time. So taking the difference between late finish and early finish, we find that the uh, float time is zero at this point. Okay, now since both uh, activity F and G emerge from the same end node, their late finish time is the late start time of the end activity. So the late finish time of this uh, uh, two activity F and G is 17. After that we compute for the late start. So the late start at node F is now the difference between the late finish minus duration and now we have 12. Also the float for activity F is the difference between the late finish and the, the early finish. So taking that difference we are going to have a float of 9. For activity G we have the uh, late finish time as 17 so the late start time is the difference between the late finish time minus uh, duration and we are going to have 10. And the corresponding total float is the difference between uh, late start and the early start. So taking this difference you'll find that the total float is zero. Now, moving from activity G, we, are move, uh, we go to activity D and E, okay? So for activity E and D, also both of them, they emerge from the same activity G, and the uh, late start time for activity G is 10, and this becomes the late uh, finish time of these two activities. Now, the late finish time at this activity is going to be 10, and the corresponding late start time is 10 minus 6, uh, that is 4. And the, the corresponding float here is 0. And uh, for activity D, the late finish time is 10. And the corresponding late start time is 9. And the, the float is 7. Okay. Now we are done with these two activities. So we move for activity C. For activity C, the late finish time is the late start time of the activity F. So we pick there 12 and the late start time for this activity is uh, 9, the difference between late finish minus duration. And the, the total float is 9. So taking the difference between the late finish and the early finish, you'll have the uh, float which is 9. And uh, after that we move to activity B. Activity B is a success activity of uh, activity uh, e okay so you can see that the you can see that the late start time of activity e uh, is 4 and this one is the late finish time of activity b 
So after having this value here, the corresponding late start time for activity B is the difference between uh, late finish minus duration and we are going to have zero. And the float here is zero. And the lastly activity is activity A, which is the uh, successor activity of activity D. And the uh, activity D, it's a late finish, uh, it's a late start time is nine. And this one becomes the late finish time for activity A. And the, the corresponding late start time is uh, late finish minus duration, and we are going to have seven. And this corresponding float is seven. So lastly, you end up with the uh, start or dummy activity at the start uh, or at the initial stage. So this dummy activity, uh, it picks the value, which is the minimum value between the late start of the uh, predecessor activity. Okay, so the predecessor activity of this uh, dummy activity here are uh, A, B, and C. So the minimum uh, late start time here is uh, zero. So we pick zero at this point, and the, the late start time becomes zero, and the float is zero. So we are done with uh, computing the early time and the late time together with the float using the precedence diagram method. So now let's uh, take this information to our summary table. So we consider this uh, last network diagram with, with field informations. You can see we have the informations, the early start, uh, early finish, late start, uh, then this is the late finish, then we have a float. So we can copy this information to our summary table. So copy them. This is easy. Then after that, we have to find the head event slack for the other kind of floats. So the head event slack for uh, activity or node event is like this. So the head event slack for activity A is this activity D. Uh, they are obtaining from this activity D. Okay. So whether you are taking the difference between the uh, late finish and the early finish or late start and the uh, early start uh, is upon you, but uh, the head event for activity A uh, in the uh, next activity. So you take that difference and then you fill the information there. Okay. Then after that, you can compute the free floats. You know the formula for computing the free float uh, is a total float minus the head event slack. So having that, you can compute and you uh, end up with this information. For the tail event slack, the same method uh, we use, but uh, this time now, the uh, tail event for activity uh, A is at uh, the start activity, okay? So the tail event uh, for activity A, B, and C, they are here. So we take the difference between the late finish and the uh, early finish. So the difference is the uh, tail event slack for activity A, B, and C because they come from the same node. And the tail event slack for activity D is obtained from this activity A, and the tail event slack for activity E is obtained from activity B, and the tail event slack informations are obtained from uh, tail uh, or activity C. So the tail event for activity G basically will be obtained from the activity E because this one uh, gives us the maximum value and this will be the last event between these two. So the tail uh, event slack for this activity G will be obtained from this activity E. So that is how you can obtain the tail event slack and you can fill that information and you are ready to compute the independent float. So take the difference between the free float and the tail event slack and you will have that information. So this is how you can compute the late, early, and float time using the precedence diagram method. So from here now, you can go back to the previous uh, video and uh, use this information to summarize in a grant chart so that it can be familiar to everybody involved in the project. So thank you for watching and keep in touch. We are coming with the uh, other video on project management. Goodbye.